Hi, this is Angie. Thank you for joining us here on my channel. I hope you enjoy this very easy video and decide to paint along with me. Also, please don't forget to like my channel and subscribe and enjoy all the other videos that you see on here. I put quinacridone magenta on there. And then I'm going to put some yellow. I have found some cad yellow. Any kind of yellow will work. And I am going to put some um, orange on there. And of course, titanium white. You can't do anything without titanium white. Let's see how much I could see. Can I see that? Or do I have to go over this way? I have a delay, so I'm looking to see where to put the color. And I'm thinking I have to go this direction. Well, if that doesn't work, I'll go both directions with my orange. Okay, so I'm missing a row on my palette, and everybody likes to see the palette. I uh, could move it over. Let's see if that works. Well, anyway, it's pretty straightforward, like I said, so it shouldn't be a problem. And I'm going to start at the top and use my phthalo blue and white and uh, ultramarine blue and maybe a touch of purple. Okay. And I'll probably move my um, I want to see if I can move my palette where you could see the mixing. I'll see what happens. My delay seems like it's really big, like by the time I see what I'm doing on my palette. Okay, so I'll put my blues together and some white and a touch of purple. Because I want that top, oops, sorry for hitting the microphone. I want that top, top pretty dark, but it's going to darken anyway. A um, little more white. Oh, I see. I see where I am now. See if I can move this over. See what happens. And yeah, maybe a touch more purple. Okay, so I have my phthalo blue, my ultramarine blue, and some purple for the top. And it's really gonna darken. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start up here. Yeah, that's the color I'm going for. Starting out really dark because I want that big contrast with the top of the tree. And since now I am Starting to get into it, I should show you the end results of what it's going to look like. Um, before I complete the whole thing. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet, it's my winter oak. I've done it before and I thought I'd go ahead and do it again. Let me even this out a little. 
And then I'm going to put some just straight white on there, on this bottom edge. And I'm doing that so that I can add my little sunset colors without it blending too much with the blue. So it's more of a transition. I'll rinse my brush off. You get a little bit more white on the edge. Now I'm going to go over it again, <clears throat> a little bit more white. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the sea. It's the sky <clears throat> meeting the ground. Okay. Rinse off a little bit. And then I'm going to go into my orange. Wipe this off. Okay. I'm going to my orange. A little bit of white. I'm going to put a little water on my brush. Strategically adding a little orange first and a little white because I want to get my yellows in there too. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip that part. For now, let that dry a little. Uh, maybe I'll put a little more orange in there. And then I'm going to come back and add yellow to that. A little more orange, a little more white. A little bit more water. Okay. Let that dry. Now I'm going to go into my quinacridone magenta and my white. Dip a little bit from the edge of the um, white and then um, the quinacridone magenta. And then I get a pink. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the quinacridone, so it's not such a shocking pink. And then go up a little bit on there. So it has a little bit of a blend and not so much of a stripey look, okay? All right. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom part with my white. And my blue. And I want this a little lighter. I left it a little wet, my brush a little wet, and I added the white to the blue I already have on my palette. I need more white. 
And this is going to provide the snow for the ground. I want that a little cleaner. This is kind of a really easy peasy fun painting to do. It really is. You don't have to be fussy. You know, it's one of those relaxing kind. Okay. So I'm going to leave this up for those to catch the replay. I know some people said that they were still going to be at work when I do this. So I will leave this up. I still work the night shift. Believe it or not, I got about one more year before I, in that part of my life, hopefully, <laughs> and retire. I've got a touch of orange in here. It's not going to hurt. I flipped it over. I flipped my canvas over just to make my life easier. I don't know why. It seems like my white is absorbing. Everything is absorbing so much when I, when I put the white on. I don't know why. It's like it's sucking it in. Okay. Now I'm going to look like I'm going to have to spray the back of this canvas to get that big wrinkle out of it. But I'm not very concerned. Okay. So I have my white on there. I'm going to flip it over. Okay. Rinse my brush off. So I'm going to add a little more yellow here. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more into the orange. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my palette paper and just randomly add a little bit more yellow into the, um, into the orange. I'll wet that brush a little. It's not orange, it's a pink. Did I say orange? I'm going to add it into the pink and then, then I took the pink and then I'm mixing it right on the um, palette, little pink. And so it's like a little pink and a little orange. And this edge I didn't get very well, so I want to get that too. Okay, so I wanted to do that. All right, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off or use another brush. I always do that. And I want to add a little bit more orangey yellow into that top part. Get a little more orangey yellow into that. So my orange and my yellow I put together. Okay. Mostly yellow. But I didn't want it so... And now I can play with it because it's not going to turn green, you know? And that's why I didn't get too into it before because I didn't want to end up just going over it and over it and over it. Okay, so that's, this is what I wanted. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So I'm going to mix um, some colors together and get a brown. Um, I'm going to mix some of my yellow with some of my quinacridone magenta on my palette. Let me see if you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah. A little yellow and a little quinacridone. <clears throat> So I have a little quinacridone, a little yellow. I'm going to add some um, blue to that. 
some ultramarine blue, and it made it a little greenish, brownish now. Okay. I'm going to go backwards compared to most people. It seems to dry and be dry enough for some reason. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start up here. I have my angle brush, and I'm going to start way out here with my branches. And then I press harder as I get down here. And then okay. Didn't really mean to go all the way down there. And so I'll fix that up later. Okay. Same way with this. I'm gonna go like that. Go like that. Just make some branches on here. Okay, the angle brush really helps a lot. I'm going to make this much more substantial in the middle. A little bit more water. A little bit more um, quinacridone. Yellow. I'm just mixing what I have on my palette and uh, to make my brown. So. You know, you kind of like have to think about what goes into a brown, um, what a brown is made with. And you can kind of make your own, just like you can make black. But black has more of a combination of everything in it. So, um, quinacridone and yellow. And then my ultramarine blue is what I've come up with to make my brown. Well, I have enough for my tree, that's for sure. Just from mixing and mixing. There, the quinacridone helped. When I had it, got it too green, I put more quinacridone magenta in there. And that browned it up again. So now it's a nice brown. Okay, so if it's green, add more quinacridone magenta. All right, so I need more. Oh, I got quite a hunk of um, it's pretty, it's a substantial tree, so you know, you need to and then just trail it out a little bit. And then, so what I do is I start out really lightweight, really light um, at the top, my pressure, really light at the top, okay? And then as you go down, you press a little bit harder, just a little bit and a little bit until you get a nice, you know, and then... Some some ways I want to fatten this up a little bit, so I kind of use the same method, just going over it. Okay, now this down here, I wanted to make it <clears throat> more snowy at the bottom, but that's okay. This still works. And then I like it going out quite a bit. Okay, and same with here. And then, like some branches closer to the top. I didn't even redip or anything. I love trees. I love trees more since I started painting than I ever did. You know, but I always got sad if um, a lot of this is going to be covered up with snow. <clears throat> I was always sad when I saw um, trees cut down to build houses, and I know they have to, and I hear pros and cons on that, but um, it always made me a little sad. So now here I go with the white again, and I need quite a bit of white. So it, I kind of think of um, how the wind is blowing on the... Um, how the wind is blowing uh, towards the tree, okay? 
So that's kind of what I do in order to um, know where I'm going to put the snow. So, you know, let me just fix that a little bit so it's not just hanging out there like it's broken. And I'm going to fix this a little bit. So it gives me a little bit of direction for where to put the snow. All right. So I'm going to have the wind coming from the right. So it's going to land against the tree branches and it's going to land on the tree branches this way and coming this way toward the tree. All right. So um, welcome whoever's on. Thanks for popping in even if you don't stay. Okay. So I'm going to now add some snow. And like I said, I'm coming from the right. The wind is coming from the right. So I get into my paintings a little bit so I could feel it. And then that way I could, um, other people could feel it when they see it. Okay. So I'm adding it, but it's not going to be perfect. It's going to clump inside here in the corners, just like snow does. Okay. So I'm going to put some on here because it's coming from the right and, you know, putting my snow on there. Now I'm going to put my snow here and come down here a little bit, clump it in the corners again, you know, cause it's snow, let it drip a little bit in some areas. Same thing with here not necessarily even you know because it's snow and then i'm gonna have it going this way again <clears throat> not like a stripe just like a little bit of a hit or miss and it's coming right here in the corners and against here a little bit okay it's coming against here there we go and it's actually coming up the tree a little bit <clears throat> so clumping in the corners and yeah, which is fun that part's fun for some reason i don't know why okay and of course on the parts that are more horizontal you know you want to make sure that the snow is landing on it because it has a place to land. So if it's horizontal, okay. Now, so what I'm going to do too now is just, you know, make, you know how the, um, the ice forms, I'm just making a little, you know how the ice forms and you have like little icicles and stuff like that at the top. So you don't see all the branches. Sometimes you just see snow and a little bit of branches. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing what you would see if you were outside. Just hit some of the snow. Um, some of the branches, little hash marks. Kind of like that. Wind's blowing. Some of it you don't really see what's going on. Okay. Because it's the trees, it's the trees in the winter time. Same thing with down here. You know, I might even have like a piece of um, snow on one side and branches on the other side of my brush. Okay. And don't fill it all in too much.
because you still want to leave enough room for the birds to fly, okay? Still want enough room for the birds to get through. Yeah, there's some birds. They haven't made it down south yet because it's the beginning of winter. And that's how it goes. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more thickness to this right here just because I feel like I need to. And then I'm going to add a little more snow in the middle. Just make a little bit of an adjustment. Wiped off my brush, put a little snow right here just to give it more of an oak tree feeling. <clears throat> I missed the corner of a collection of the snow. I wanted a little more snowy though. Okay, here we go. Okay. So that's kind of it. You could always add a little bit more, tweak it a little bit, but that's kind of it. Um, I'm gonna do a no-no and wipe that off with my finger. That kind of fixed it. I'm going to a little bit. Now, what I need to do, that's pretty much it with the tree. I'd like to shade in the, um, the uh, snow a little bit so i have just a little bit more pretty much dried up but i have a little bit more of my blue on my palette i don't want much so it's almost dried up but i just want enough to put um some shadow in the um by the tree okay so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go real close to the tree and just put some little shading there, little shadow. And I didn't want the tree <clears throat> running off my page. So this is where I fix it. Okay. So I put a little shadow there. Okay, maybe a touch more blue. Because you got branches and everything, so you and you got a nice substantial tree, so you need to shade that in a little bit. All right, and then maybe put a little bit of shading in the background. Just cause, add a little interest. Okay. And then I need more white there. Got a little too blue. A little more white there. Okay. Let me clean my brush out. That might be the problem. Okay. There we go. Let me get rid of that. I don't want that too. There we go. That's better. I don't want those brush strokes in there too much. That would be a little weird. Okay. <laughs> Just painted my mic. Okay, that's better. That was a little too, too. And so you can always make adjustments, you know, in your painting. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know. That's a little farther away, so I'm going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to take a picture of it so you could see it. And um, 
use it as the thumbnail so you can get a better picture because really the pictures look a lot better than the video as far as true colors and everything. But that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. And it does in the other camera in the video. So I noticed that a long time ago. It looks better when I hold it up. And it looks better um, when I take a picture of it. But anyway, it's just an easy little thing to do. So anyway, if you want to, you can look at it on the... Um, on the uh, replay and I love your work and I love your watercolors like I don't do watercolors but um, I definitely should play with it and learn it um, yeah it is a hard learning curve and and the whole time you're trying to set up your business you're not really making any money <laughs> So, and you still have things to pay for, um, but you can't let that, like, you can't let that stay in your mind because um, it, it impacts you in a negative way. So I try not to think about it. The first of the month I think about it, I really think about it when all the bills are there, but the rest of the month I try not to think about it and um, just think about um, sharing with people and that kind of stuff, so. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I feel like this is going to be a good year, though. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to get going. Thanks for joining me. Whoever joins me on the replay, thanks for joining me. Um, if you watch to the end, and I will let you know, um, the colors are phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, um, some kind of yellow, like cad yellow is what I use, but you don't have to use that. And orange, and um, I made a combination of things to make a brown, but you could use a brown if you have a brown. Um, and of course, titanium white. So that's it. Those are the colors, and I will try to put them in the description. All right? But I do acrylics on watercolor paper, but thin it out. Is that what you're saying? Oh, thin, thin wash, like thin it out. And that makes it more like watercolor. Yeah, I have to do that. I know if I do that and thin it out and it's wet, I definitely need to take the edges. But um, so it's similar if I water it down and just do thin washes. But I, I also learned, even though I haven't tried it, um, I learned that the you start out with uh, light colors instead of the dark colors. So I know there's more there's more things to it, but I would like to figure out watercolors just because I just want to know. Um, not that I want to teach it, I just want to know. Yeah, a glaze. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Ian. Um, I'm gonna get going. So um, thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. And I hope you guys have a good year this year. I hope your painting journey, um, I know they have ups and downs, but I hope they all go upward <laughs> this year. All right, you all take care.